hands have you down? Uh, how long have you been in her? How long? Since when did you enter? Uh, Since when? Back. All her life. All her life? Yeah. How long? How, uh, how long have you been in her? How did you enter? Uh, through what? You entered through what? Uh, through what? What have you caused in her life? Uh, yeah. uh, okay, right now you're going. We don't have time for you, you demon. Get out right now. Get out right now. Out! 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. So if you could please share with us where you're from. I am from Walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to be with us here in Tri-Cities today. And can you tell us a little bit of what you were going through before your deliverance, before the Raise to Deliver conference? What was your life like? What were you going through? So I've struggled with drug addiction since eighth grade. I started smoking marijuana and drinking. Um, I could not have fun without it. It was as soon as Friday hit, it was, where's the bottle? Where's the marijuana? Um, so I didn't really know. I was really confused. Um, even when I would go to church and when I would, you know, do that, I would still hurry and want to rush out and go with my friends to smoke. It was, you know, it was, it controlled my life for sure. So I had no, um, had no idea what the Holy Spirit was, even though I did believe I was a lukewarm Christian. I was, like I said, again, very confused. And I thought that I could do whatever I want. And my sins would be forgiven and I'd get into heaven either way. So it didn't matter. Wow, wow. So you, you struggled with drug addiction and you were confused with like who God was. So how did you, how long did you struggle with that? And how did you hear about Hungry Gen in our conference? So I heard about Hungry Gen through uh, high school friends, Marcos and Arielle Jackson. They are members of this church. So they uh, told me about it. Um, and I had tried everything on my own to get off, even though the opiates that I was described at the time or excuse me, prescribed, um, were from the doctor. I had tried everything to get off of them and one was, was not able to. Um, I took, I was on them for seven years. And so, uh, the doctors kept, you know, telling me about it. And finally, um, they reached out and they were like, you know, have you heard of a deliverance? I had no clue what it was. And I just went with an open heart because I knew I needed to try something. Come on, come on. That's so powerful. And so, you came to the conference. What did you experience going through the prayer line? So I walked up to the prayer line, and as soon as Pastor Rickard put his hands on me, I instantly seen light. Um, I could not open my eyes. I, you know, um, I said this before, like the demons were already convincing me not to go. Um, so as I was in the middle, I had to move myself to the edge. And because I was like, oh, I'm claustrophobic. I'm not going to be able to sit here this long. I had like all the excuses in the book. Uh, so I got moved to the edge. We were one of the last people um, to go through that line. Um, and so I, uh, as soon as he touched me, I instantly seen light. And and, and I was trying, me, Kayla, was trying to open my eyes and to see what was going on around me. All I could hear, but the feeling, the power of the Holy Spirit had taken over my whole body that I had no control. It didn't matter how much I tried to open my eyes. It was just bright. It was so bright. Wow, God is so good. So just, yeah, give a round of applause for Jesus. And so after going through our prayer line, after receiving your deliverance, what has your life been like? How, has, how, has things, how have things changed in your life? So let me tell you guys, so many curses overturned. My finances are good. Um, I have no depression, no anxiety. I'm still clean and sober since November 4th. I just had a clean UA. Um, I got a new job at the rehab center in College Place. Um, God is good. He's just continuing to work with me and showing me patience, you know, as I'm learning this. Um, so I am so thankful. And yeah, it's just yes to him. All praise to Jesus. Come on, come on. So, so many people have struggled and gone through what you have gone through. What would you say to those who are still going through it, who are still not sure what to do next? They've struggled with addiction. They haven't been able to break out of it. What would you say to those people? So I would say uh, definitely give Jesus 
a yes. You know, don't, don't let the devil lie to you. He's going to tell you, you know, I've had a lot of spiritual attacks since my deliverance. And it just brings me that much closer to God. You know, it's so, you know, he constantly is, you're going to go back, you're going to come back. I mean, the devil's big mad. He lost a soul. I, I'm a recovering addict for 18 years of addiction. So, uh, yeah, a long, long time. And I would just say that go to him and and say yes, give him your all. If you're unsure or even like, you know, pastor said in the past, when you don't feel him, he is there. He is always working no matter what. So continue to praise him, praise and worship, lift him up, stay in your word and just give God all the glory and he will overturn any and everything you're going through. So come on, come on. God is so good. Thank you so much, Kayla, for your wonderful testimony. Our God is so powerful. And if he could do it for Kayla, if he could break 18 years of addiction, he can do it for you. He can set you free in an instant. So say yes to God today.